This film's a very broad film over the whole of Holland. So in order to cover everything, uh, the teams are split up into different groups, uh, depending on what's needed, what they specialize in, what kind of shots we need. And my background, if you'd call it that, is long lens following birds in flight. So I was positioned in the Beast Boss to film the white-tailed sea eagle and its nest here in the Beast Boss. We're using this lens by Sigma, a 3 to 800, and this is the only lens which gives us what we needed at the nest particularly, which was both the reach of 800 and the ability to pull back to 300, because we needed one lens that we could film a whole sequence in. We have no time to change lenses while the eagles are there. So it was important to get the wide shots at 300 and then be able to zoom in and get the closer shots at 800. In, in order to film the eagles, we needed to be right with them through the whole process. We couldn't live uh, on the outskirts of the reserve and make the journey in each day. We had to be with them. So we were put up in one of the huts from Stasbosbe and it's, uh, yeah, it has everything you need. It's uh, kind of like a pimped out shed. Uh, it's like a barrack. And yeah, we're like right on the reserve. So everything is just at our fingertips. Filming at the nest is you sit it out and you wait. And what happens, you make the, me you make the best of it. Um, you just sit there and wait and you make the best of what is, what shows itself. Whereas with the grebe, the great crested grebe, this is a creature which is there and you can do and try all sorts of different camera angles and and that was a complete opposite to the eagle but very enjoyable for me. The groups were very allowing for us. They soon got used to us in the boat and being able to film them and that was really a, a great feeling. Um, in fact me and a photographer who joined us, Bertie, at the time he was standing um, in the water, in fact. I couldn't because I had, this is too expensive to drown. But um, he was standing in the water and the grebe would just swim right past him. And sometimes it's a bit of a culture shock when you've spent, I don't know, if you haven't been out of the reserve for a week or two and then you go out, there's a, just a s subtle um, culture shock of, oh, there is, like, there is civilization. <laughs> there is something beyond the walls of the Beast Bus um, because it is a place which very much sucks you into its world when you're filming um, and uh, that's the charm of it really it's a big enough place that means you're just you're, you're just engulfed by it when you're in it um, and I think that's I think that's the most enjoyable thing I, I like about staying here is that it doesn't feel like a, a nine to five job. It certainly isn't in many ways, but um, you're not traveling anywhere to film. You are, you are there the whole time. And uh, I think that makes a big difference in your approach because you're not there to go there, take what you can and go. You're there to uh, be there with nature. And it's, I don't know, it's a subtly different approach to filming when you're stationed there for seven months like I've been. Yeah, it's very enjoyable. Mm -hmm.